All right, and we finally made it to the gym. Just doing some nice warm-ups. Got to warm up the shoulders because the shoulders are actually quite important. But essentially, got to start off doing some bench press. Probably do around like 80 kilos. You'll see how that feels. You'll see how strong I feel. And uh, just slowly just warm up to about 80 kilos, really. So, see how we go. <sighs> I'm going to show you guys how good this pump's going to be. <laughs> I'm on the road to getting lean. And then once I'm going to get lean, I'm going to stay lean, obviously. I don't know if I've said that yet enough. <laughs> but <laughs> I haven't actually done bench in a while, so we'll see how that goes. But obviously, my goal isn't strength. My goal is to increase my strength during my bulk. Obviously, being during a car day, it's been extremely hard to make any sort of progression in terms of strength and getting stronger. The main goal is to maintain my muscle mass and get bloody lean. <laughs> and then I know once that phase is over, I can really focus on getting strong, at least get to 100 kilo bench. This is gonna be, that is a goal for my next bolt. 100% I know I'm gonna get there. Get another warm up set real quick. 40 kilos. I'm still feeling pretty light, which is good, which is good. I'm feeling pretty strong. So yeah, nice little cheeky warm up with 10 on each side. I don't claim to be the most strongest person on bench. But, move up to about 60. 60 should still be roughly lightweight. See how that feels. Oh, my elbow's playing up a little bit, which is a bit annoying, so definitely gonna be giving it a bit of a rest for a week. So I'm not gonna be using my arms too much, gonna be resting that a little bit. But at the end of the day, you don't need to do anything. You have a cheat day, you could literally just get back on it and enjoy it. But, you know, at the same time, if you feel like you want to do something and you feel like just doing nothing, getting back on it is not enough, then by all means, you know, reduce your calories, calculate it all. And the days after, as long as you get back on it, I think that is just the biggest thing. But anyways, I'm gonna go see how 60 kilos feels. All right. There you go. <laughs> oh, that wasn't too bad, actually. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I think I've got 80 for a few. We'll see how 80 feels. 80's feeling pretty good. Maybe I could even get 90 kilos. So, see how that goes. Just gonna do a cheeky rest. We'll see how things go, shall we? Well, after a bit of a cheeky rest, let's see how this feels, eh? Oh. Oh, shit. One more, one more. Oh, did you see that last rep? Oh, that is the best. I even paused, I intentionally paused that last one. I paused that last one because I knew I could do it. I, I knew it was in my mind, I could fucking do it, and I did. I pause a little bit because, you know, you actually exert it more because you're using less momentum. When you bounce off your chest, there's a bit of momentum there, so you're not 100% using the muscle. So I was able to pause it and really give it extra, generate extra force within the muscles, obviously, because if you try bent, paused, as opposed to, you know, touch and go, paused is really good because it actually helps, I feel like, generate true strength. It's not generating power. Like when you touch and go, it's like you're generating a lot more force. But usually when you bounce it off your chest, usually when you bounce it off your chest, it's probably about from like there to there. But when you rest on your chest, your force is literally starting from where the bar is to there. So it's like that extra range of motion. In the whole grand scheme of things, is it going to really matter? Probably not if you keep consistent and overall. It's not gonna make the huge difference if you're training for Mr. Olympia or a powerlifting competition. Potentially. <laughs> so, potentially. That's all right, I'll probably do a few more sets of this actually, 80 kilos, I'm really starting to feel my chest engage, which is good. Because with bench press, if you're actually struggling to feel your like chest working on bench press, instead of repping that out, 
If you do roughly around about heavy enough weight for about five reps, and then those last reps were a struggle like that, honestly, that's where I feel like my pecs work a lot more during bench press, and that's where I get the best pump doing bench press. Definitely, give that a shot on your next push day. Let's see how it goes. It's been a couple minutes, and uh, I'm gonna be doing another, another cheeky set, 80 kilos. I think that's a good solid weight for now. We don't need headphones. This time we're going David Goggins mode. All right. One more, come on. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, that was good. I love it. That, that last rep, when you really fight it and you get it, it is the best feeling in the fucking world. Oh yeah, did I let you guys know today's Saturday night? I'm filming on a Saturday night because, as you can tell, gym's empty. Because who the fuck's gonna be <laughs> filming? Who's gonna be working out on a Saturday night? Other than yours truly. <laughs> but yeah, perks of going to small local, small local gym. That is not obviously a Dermot gym. Because I'm sure if I go to Dermot gym, it's probably packed right now. <laughs> That's pretty real. But this gym, beautiful. I can train a Saturday night, so it's empty. Nothing, no better feeling. I, I could, I, I could do whatever I want. I could come here, and I can use this machine and move around. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. That's pretty fucking good. So uh, yeah, now we got to rest. Fatigue's starting to kick in. Well, that's what happens when you feel Saturday nights, I guess. <laughs> One minute I was saying, hey, Saturday nights are great, gym's empty. Next minute now, it's like pre-workout starting to wear off. I guess it's a good thing, because I'm gonna have a good night's sleep tonight. Are you fucking stupid to take pre-workout like eight o'clock at night? Are you fucking stupid to take pre-workout like eight o'clock at night? But anyways, uh, this is gonna be my third set. I believe I counted properly. Usually I like to take like longer rest sets between you know bench press, squats, or deadlifts when I'm doing compound movements uh, because obviously they're taxing and require a lot of energy. Um, but then when I'm really doing like isolation movements, sometimes I know sometimes science or like studies show that drop sets aren't the most effective at you know maybe building muscle or this and that. But I love doing drop sets. I love working hard, you know, and I love like pushing the muscle to its absolute like failure point, you know. When I get to failure at a particular weight, I like to drop it down and just get that extra, you know, few reps in. It just feels good and it, I love training hard and maybe mentally it gives me, you know, I just like doing drop sets, especially when it comes to the dumbbell section. So I will see how many reps I can do. Hopefully I'm gonna aim for like five, six. Hopefully that'll be pretty good. Um, and then I'm already feeling my chest pretty pumped as well. So yeah. That last rep, Jesus Christ, oh, that feels so good though. It's literally a battle when you're getting that up, you know. I could have easily quit it and be like, nah, you know, hey, come help me, you know, stop the recording. One, yeah, I got the recording there, so I've got some sort of accountability, sure. <laughs> but the other is like, no music too, I'm feeling like David Goggins at the moment. I could be putting headphones in too, but. I don't know, I'm not feeling headphones today. For whatever reason, maybe I'm focusing on the video, but that's how your reps should be, I'm telling you. I mean, on this cut, whether I put on muscle or not, but definitely, that's insane. Oh, 
Finally, I've been waiting to take this out. Can you see the chest pop? A little bit. Oh yeah, not too bad. Look at this. See these things? They're called weights. <laughs> I'm gonna be putting them away because that's what you should be doing after you finished your bench press. Remember that. It's not hard. So you grab this plate. <laughs> Yeah, you put it over there. And it makes a nice cool little jingle sound too. So if you ever see me working out and I still have weights on the bar, chances are I'm not finished. Probably going to the toilet. Oh. Okay. Now, I'm gonna move this bench, we're gonna do some nice, uh, sexy dumbbell presses. Now, when it comes to your dumbbell presses, actually, I find that, for me, I put it up one notch. That's flat for me, right? For the, whatever reason, these particular benches, I don't know. But when it's, on its flattest thing, that for me that's a bit of an uh, decline press. So this is like flat for me. I know it's weird, but for me I feel like that actually hits the, the, the middle portion where flat, you know, is supposed to hit. But, I already did flat, so. Um, usually I go about number seven on here. I don't know what degrees that is, but. No, wait, sorry. That's about, no, that's number five. You know, I won't go too much of an aggressive incline, actually. I'm not gonna go too much aggressive. Since I'm a bit fatigued, probably gonna go suss out. Usually I do about 35s, sometimes 37s on a good day, and on an extremely good day, I'm able to pump out 40s for a couple. But right now, I'm feeling about 32s seem all right. We'll see how they feel. Do a couple cheeky incline presses. The thing you should always do when you're on your dumbbell presses, you look yourself in the mirror, and you tell yourself, who the fuck do you wanna be, all right? Tell yourself that. Look at yourself dead straight in the mirror. Usually you have music blasting in your ears, some sort of motivational shit, right? Let that sink in. Look at yourself in the mirror. Who cares? I mean, I've got no one around me, sure. Who the fuck cares if there's other people training around you, bigger dudes? Who the fuck absolutely cares about other people right now? You, you go to the gym for you, isolate yourself. It's good practice to really just be in your own little zone, all right? Who the fuck cares? Everyone else is in their own world too. We're just sharing a beloved space together. And what you do, is you have music on, motivational shit going on, some rap, whatever it is you listen to. And you zone in, think about your problems, think about life, think about how you're gonna man up and be the man you wanna be and how you're gonna craft your destiny, your life, what you're doing right now. All that shit should be in your head at this point. When you have the dumbbells here and either when the music hits, when the bass drop hits, if your hard style's your thing, but when you feel like the time is right, you grab these bad boys and you show them who the fuck you are. I don't even know what number this is. Fuck. No. Fuck. Oh, that's Nothing is better is when you get a night, when you get strong enough to hit like 30 plus kilos, whatever that is in pounds. I usually think usually around 30 kilos is when you get to like big boy weights. You know, that's when you've like intermediate, you've been training for a while. It's not too hard to get to. Anyway, around like 30s to 40s. And then when you're able to drop that weight, like you complete a set and you drop the weight. You just feel like, you feel strong. Because like the louder the weight hits, like once I fucking get to like 60 kilo, 
Can you drop that? I swear, you just feel like such a sick cunt. <laughs> you feel like just such a strong, you feel strong, you feel powerful. And, um, you know, especially with music blasting in your ears. I don't know, it's a really good feeling. And obviously, if you're gonna be dropping your weights, be mindful. But if you're going to failure, now, you know, this may be a controversial topic, but hear me out, one sec. If you're going to absolute failure, you're training to get to failure. And you drop your weights, it's fine. As long as you're mindful of people around you. I've got to grab. So as long as you're mindful of the people around you, then that's fine. Um, I don't see that an issue being the weights, you know. To a degree, it should be the gym's responsibility to ensure the flooring is fine, to ensure the dumbbells fine to a point. I've obviously not going to be stupid about it, but even dumbbells themselves should be crafted to a point not to be so delicate, like proper dumbbells. So, yeah. Um, especially once you get to a certain weight. I think, you know, it's important. It's, it's part of the training. It's part of training hard. Because trying to control the weight, especially when you go heavy and you're able to do heavy weight, can be actually quite dangerous because you're having to control the weight when you're already like fatigued and you just need to get the weight off. You're already fatigued. You're training to absolute failure or thereabouts, and you're gonna to have to try and control the weight to try and get on your like, to get on, you know, your knees and arms, and then you might actually, you know, have a shoulder injury because, you know, you're trying to control that or anything like that. You know, as long as you're mindful of people around you, there shouldn't be too much of an issue. Plus, I mean, you know, the sound it makes when you can hear it through your loud fucking music too. Oh, I feel like it's a really cool feeling, so. But anyways, obviously, I'm gonna rest up for a little bit, not too long though. I'm gonna smash out another set. Right, set two. Let's go at it. Had a bit of a rest. Ugh. Quick tip. Obviously, when you are like getting the dumbbells on your leg, if you put them cl as close as you can to your knee, it gives you the best leverage for when you kick it up. You know, this is how I sort of do it. Like, pretty much here, you know. Zone in. Think about your life. Everyone's got fucking problems. Everyone's got shit they're going through. Think about that. Think about how you can be a better human being overall, right? This is why we come to better ourselves. And then, when the time's right, just kick it up as high as you can. You sort of just move it to your chest. After all, it becomes muscle memory. Right. Nice and controlled. As slow as you can without injuring yourself, obviously. Feel your pecs engage. Oh, fuck. One more. I don't know if you can tell with the angle, usually a black top it hides a lot of shadows, but if you can get into the light, like that chest. I feel like my left side's overall just much bigger. I'm just imbalanced somehow. But, uh... Pretty pumped up though, I do have to say. Oh, well, I hope I didn't fuck up the lens. Jesus, all right, that's good. That's how your reps should be most of the time. Pretty much to failure. Cool, look at that. That is a pumped up bicep. I don't know if you saw my biceps before, but uh, that is what like, a fuck, that's what a cheat day does. What? Are <laughs> you focusing on that? Uh, that? That's a pumped up bicep. Naturally, of course. All right, beautiful. All right, now, I feel like I got a bit of a pump at the moment. My muscles are getting there. Next up, we're gonna do some chest flies on the cable machines, all right? Right. <laughs> you could always sometimes judge the pump by how difficult it is to take off your compression top. 
Um, oh, this is a tough game. Hey, not bad, actually. But I know we can get a bit more pumped. What I like to do, I like to tuck my... I don't know how many of you do this, but I like to tuck in my singlets. It makes me feel bigger, it makes the singlets tighter, so it makes you look bigger too. You know what I mean? So. I don't know if you see that, but yeah, it's my back there. Biceps. Oh yeah, and then I love this pose. I love like, I love that pose. And then, oh, see how that goes. <laughs> but, yeah, a few cool little cheeky poses. Mad pump from doing them. So. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, it kind of just happens, yeah. No, like, I, w I want it like symmetrical, that's it. Ah, oh, it's never going to happen, but you could try. Rest up, we'll do set two. What I also like to do sometimes in between, if I go to a point where the gym's empty enough, if I go during peak periods, I'll stick to like one exercise and one station because obviously, but sometimes I like to come during the day, early mornings when the gym's a lot more free so I can like alternate. I'll move like a little set of flies and then I'll like kind of, is it a super set? But like from flies right afterwards, I like to do lat raises, lateral raises, lat raises. And then from there, ooh, I love doing these. Just, I like spam them so much. That's what people say to do. And then some other things you can also do, which I like to do as well, is hold it and really control. Because if you want to build like absolute proper strength, if you want to avoid shoulder injuries, the best thing you could do is strengthen those bad boys up, right? Now, you could just do this for days because you're kind of using momentum too. You want to limit the momentum. So slowly control the weight up and then control the weight down, right? But then the next best thing is hold it there too, right? Build a bit of maybe endurance if you want, but like build some strength, strengthen those tendons. Apparently isolation movements help strengthen the tendon a lot more as opposed to the muscles. So that's always good. Right, you want to avoid shoulder injuries, shoulder pain. All right, control on the way down. See that? Now I see people, you know, doing the thing, and they're just like spanning it out and stuff. And there's probably some merit to it. There's probably, you know, probably still somehow worked. You are, you know, moving the muscle. You are contracting the muscle to some degree, and with some, some degree of force. And there is some degree of resistance there, but we want to maximize each rep, optimize each rep. Don't be afraid to go light. This is what, only eight kilos. But you can make it feel like 20. Okay. Yeah, you can't do anymore. Oh, look at that pump. Oh. 
I'm gonna do a drop set. <sighs> Fuck. Oh. One thing I didn't get to show you last time, actually with the shoulders, is that recently I had a bit of a I think it's more of a some sort of injury near my back my, my left trap i think was giving me some sort of i may have pinched it i did something to it and so i didn't want to let that stop me from training so i was like it sort of hurt when i was doing that like put my arm out and something i didn't really get it checked out properly i should have but it sort of had gone away and so i was like trying to heal it by just doing light work and get some blood flow into it instead of just letting it rest but I'm just gonna try and rest that. I feel like that's an overtraining thing. But as a result, I sort of stayed away from um, shoulder presses because more incline movement was uh, like I felt it a lot more. So I was like, okay, well, I still want to develop my shoulders. So I just did front raises a little bit, much lighter weight, but pumped them up, get the blood flow going and, you know, help develop it. Because at that point, I wasn't sure if it was my actual shoulders. But then after a while, thinking about it, feeling it, now the down is my trap. So yeah, recently, because I don't do shoulder presses, I've been doing a bit of like side raises or like that. Ugh. And I do some like front as well. So I try to get both, you know, sides activated. A little bit. Sometimes I like to stand. This side. Don't away. The way I hold the dumbbell when I do a side raise, hold it like this, like you can hold it like this, but I don't know, if I'm putting my thumb over here, I don't know, it's like, it's a weird grip, but like it helps me lift the butt. I mean, I'm done. Now I gotta do my other side, but. Sometimes I even like to stand up. Ugh. I want to stand up. I think it's easier when I'm standing up to actually do front raises a lot more. Ugh. Other side. Two. Go. Since I'm not going to train much, I'll get a quick bicep pump. Then I usually I just get tricep pull down, push downs. That's about it, really. Ugh. 